What's your sign? <laughs> it's cancer. <laughs> I don't know what that means, so. start running. Okay, Coach Jesse, you're going to teach me a few things because we're going to run our own 5K this morning. What are we doing to warm up? We're going to warm up our ankles starting off with. So we're just going to go side to side. So it's like you're rolling your ankle and tearing your ACL at the same time. Oh, <laughs> this is, yeah, you got to do this so you don't do that. So switch from there, we're going to raise our heels and then we're going to raise our toes to warm up everything around the ankle. My name is Jesse Ruiz, J-E-S-S-E-R-U-I-Z. -S -S I am a health and fitness coach here in Austin, Texas. It's very broad. Um, <clears throat> I'm also a running coach as well through Fleet Feet and Austin Runners Club. I have been a fitness coach here at East Austin Athletic Club for since last April. Um, I'm a mobility and durability specialist, and so I've been doing that self-taught into educated since 2010. That's just what I do professionally, but I also do, I guess as a passion I am a nonprofit project manager, so I run Operation Turkey San Marcos. So we deliver hot turkey meals to people in need on Thanksgiving Day in San Marcos and surrounding areas. And so this is your 12. I am, so I'm a disciple, uh, so I'm Christ-centered. Uh, that, that's 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 my that's who I am at a core. And then I just I spend the I spend all my days just living that out through and I use fitness and health and wellness and running. Those are the vehicles to to share you know, the person that I am and the person that I'm becoming. So versus I'm not tied to like just one social construct. Like I'm a disciple at, at my core and all these other things are just social constructs that uh, I've been given to uh, share who I am to the world. I feel, I feel good about the run. It's been a good turnout. I like to see that there's a lot of families and uh, as I mentioned earlier, especially kids. Uh, because I think it's just important to get them involved in health and wellness and fitness as early as possible. And one way to do that is that the parents lead the way and the kids will always follow. So it's good to see them out here. When did you start running? Seventh, like seventh grade. I went out for the cross country team, really sixth grade, seventh grade. I got asked to do cross country. And from the, from the beginning, it was just, I mean, uh, smashing people, you know? So my, I won my first cross country meet um, in eighth grade. It was a high school cross country meet. So I was asked to, uh, to participate with the high schoolers and won my first cross country meet there at that time as an eighth grader. A week later, I suffered a spinal cord injury. Uh, it left me paralyzed for 15 minutes. And that the running ability that I had at that point was no longer existent. I still was able to win uh, I was, I won a district, district meet. I was a district champion in three or four different uh, races consecutively. But the, the ability that I had to run at that point was no longer, it was just different. It was something that was taken away from me, which ironically, I feel like to a certain degree, it's something that I've been chasing is that, that, that runner that I was so long ago. 10 years ago, hmm. were you in Austin? I moved to Austin in 2000. Yeah, 2000, 2001, with $64 in clothes. <laughs> uh, and 10 years ago, I, I guess I was, I graduated, I was living in San Marcos. I graduated from San Marcos in 2010, and I didn't move to Austin until 2014, so I was still, I lived in San Marcos for four and a half years. And so I was bouncing around. I was working at gyms there in the area and still in the service industry, so I would fitness professional or fitness by day and then uh, <clears throat> bar back and security uh, at bars by night. It was, a, it was a real wild time. And so were there run groups 10 years ago? How long has Austin Runners Club been around? And what was it like 10 years ago? <clears throat> I mean, I wasn't running. I was doing CrossFit at the time. I was a runner, but I was just CrossFitting and, and running. So, uh, but I was still learning, just trying to figure out like, what is, where's, where's my career going, you know? I got my first start at a CrossFit gym in San Marcos, and then my first actual fitness job at a medical, it was, at the time they were called medical exercise facilities, now it's called corrective exercise. Um, I, had a, I had always had a knack for coaching, I had a knack for understanding the, the movement in the body, 
but it was all intuitive because of my injuries. And so I didn't really, I knew that these things were, they came to me relatively easy. I just didn't know well, what does that mean? And so, but the coaching aspect came kind of natural. When you were in Austin, what was the first run group you went to? Was Commodore Run Club. <clears throat> um, I was in the process of getting sober. <clears throat> I had just gotten baptized and I, getting sober was, and I didn't really address it, but I knew that I needed to get sober. And so my friend, uh, Philly, uh, Philip Spear, he's the owner of Commodore Restaurant. And he was in the, he was in the process of, <clears throat> he was in year, I don't know what, year two or three of getting sober and he's a well-known chef in town and just has a local and now a national presence. And sorry, this one club with the idea of like shifting the post shift. So instead of, you know, getting off work, getting it, you know, ending your shift with a post drink or with, yeah, with a drink or whatever, go home, get some sleep, wake up and run. And so it just coincided with, yeah, I need to get sober. Uh, the hours were 10 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, service industry hours. I was like, this is perfect. And so, uh, yeah, we even have the tattoo. About, I think 20 to 25 of us like got the tattoo in one sitting. Um, and it's the only tattoo that I've gotten. And I don't know why I felt so compelled to get it with them, but it was such a connection that I made. And everyone who came through, it was like, yeah, these are my people. I Either they were sober, sober curious, or they were still living the lifestyle, but they wanted to run. You know, it was just, running was just a segue to a healthier, or as, he, as we call it, an alternative lifestyle. But it's a lifestyle, nonetheless. If someone is, I mean, we talked about this before, but when someone says that running is too hard, <clears throat> what do you say to them? I just ask them why. And when, you, when did you first start running and did you enjoy it when you first started? I started running, I played soccer growing up, so I did a lot of running and conditioning then. Um, so I'd say, I don't know, seventh grade. Um, hated it because it was conditioning, but I've come to love it. It's become a very therapeutic thing to get my mind off the stress of the And when did you start running and do you, did you like it when you first started? I started when I moved here on the Lady Bird Lake Trail three months ago. So very new and it was a chore, but now that I have friends to do it with, it makes it so much easier. You still enjoy it now? <laughs> yes, even more so now. I think as a coach, you just need to understand why. It's pretty much it. If you can understand everyone's why and where they're coming from, everyone's coming from a different place. Everyone's, you know, even mindset, they're just at a different place, you know, each day. It's usually more likely tied to an injury or it's, neg it's a negatively associated with <clears throat> as a punishment. But you get them to talk more about that and you just can, you can kind of figure out, you know, where to go from there. And, and the why, could, and it, it could be as simple as teaching people that, what you know, you can have a goal associated with running versus just running aimlessly. And a lot of people don't understand that with run clubs. It's like, well, I don't understand why you, why you run so much or you're going to all these clubs. It's a social aspect. It's no different than if you went to happy hour all the time or you were in a book club or you, you know, fill in the blank. It's, it's, it's all this, it's a club. It's a, it's a way to, it's a community building. It's a way to meet people. It's a way to get out of your comfort zone and meet people. And, you know, especially when I started going to all these clubs, it was a way to meet people, but it was also, I knew that I could just show up to a run and I didn't have to talk to anyone. I could just run. Um, and then there was that. And then always at the end, I always ended up talking to someone. It was probably just like one person to make a connection with versus multiple people. Uh, ladies right here, so if there's anything that you wanted that wasn't here, you could buy it from us. You can purchase it from East, East Austin Athletic Club. You can just Venmo. Uh, we do have some snacks and stuff, uh, mainly for afterwards, unless you really need it now. I'm not gonna stop you from getting some Siete chips and coffee and Topo Chico. Right, for those of you guys that have pets, thank you for bringing your pets as well. We do have a friendly dog park. Why do you like to leave run? <laughs> what's the Patagonia that yeah. time you let the run? You look like a guy who was leading the run. <laughs> as a pacer? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it was a good opportunity to, uh, I think by then I had been doing, I had just started leading. Uh, it was my first coaching gig as a runner through Fleet Feet. And so and I had just come off my first marathon. And so I really, I knew that if I wanted to qualify for something like Boston, that I needed to learn how to pace. This is an opportunity to pace, but I can also do this. And I didn't know that I could, it could do, I could do that, but I knew it was something that I wanted to do. I just needed to figure out how. And that, those were just opportunities to do it. And it just so happened that 
I could do it, you know? And running eight to nine minute miles was easy. Running seven to eight minute miles was like, it was a little more challenging, but if you do it in a group setting, and then um, it's, it's more than just like showing up and looking and acting the part. It's like um, just showing it, just knowing, just having the self-confidence that you have that ability to do it um, because it, it benefits you as a runner long-term, but it also benefits someone who's who's looking for a pacer. It's just another way to connect with people. Um, and now it's, I'm not gonna say it's second nature, but now it's a year or so into it. It's it's so much easier uh, to, to do it. And it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, a need to serve. Or, uh, <clears throat> yeah, where does that come from? Yeah, so my, we grew up, we grew up Catholic. Um, I was an altar boy. But I grew up watching my dad always volunteering and uh, raising money for the church. And he just did it seamlessly. I, I'm not sure that people asked him, he just did it. My mom had two restaurants growing up, and so we grew up. And at that time, there was no such thing as child labor laws, you know? At least we grew up in a town of a thousand people. So, I mean, I grew up, my first job was like hoeing cotton in the fields, and I was probably 11. So, and we didn't know any better. That's just what, they, that's just what happened, so. But yeah, watching my mom, run that restaurant, two different restaurants, watch my dad's service. It was something I knew I wanted to do. So then when it came time for Operation Turkey, it was just seamlessly, I sought them out. Um, they didn't answer my phone call right away. Literally uh, 30 days before, uh, and I was the first city to expand outside of Austin, Brian Tolbert hit me up. He was like, hey, you know, you, you, I'm sorry. I'm just now returning your phone call a year later, uh, but we want to expand outside of Austin and you have 30 days, you know? Do you want to do this? And I was like, yes. I got off the phone. I was like, what? What did I just say yes to? Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. But at the time, I was in the service industry in San Marcos, so I sought out, just like my 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 pastor at the time, one of my bosses at the time. I was like, this is what I said yes to. What, what should I do? If you just tell me, if you just give me like a blueprint, I'll go do it. Uh, but I just need to know where to start. And they gave me like two different perspectives, and I just took it and ran with it. And that was 12 years ago. And it, it spun into like running. So I see running and coaching, these are just opportunities to serve. And <clears throat> on the mirror in New Braunfels, on, on, the, on, my, on the mirror I have uh, written down, who can you serve today? As a reminder of this is what you get to do, not what you have to do. And if I ever get to a point where I just don't, if I just dislike what I'm doing, I'll just do something different. But I really enjoy serving people and I'm, I am pretty good at it. So I'm just gonna let it ride. <laughs> Five run two. How come? <clears throat> when did you find them? And, and you, you show up a lot for this. Why is that? I do. I met PJ at a Commodore Run Club run. I believe it was on a Wednesday, and we just we just clicked mainly because it was he might have been like one of the first black runners to show up to the group. And at, at that time, and even now, you don't see a lot of men of color, people of color, minorities. I think you do now. I've noticed that more the past year, but this was like three years ago. And so I obviously I gravitated towards it because it's another person of color. It's another man of color running. We exchanged numbers and we didn't really communicate again, maybe like months later. And then I knew that at the time it was St. Elmo's Run Club. And so I was like, well, I'm, he seems like a genuine guy. I'm going to show up to, to a club run and just to support. And so, uh, so yeah, which I just showed up one Wednesday and, and now I have, uh, it, it was initially, it, just like with anything else, it's like, it's, you know, it's a, the time is different, um, you know, trying to figure out how do you, well, it's 6.30 in the morning, that's not early. I was commuting back and forth from New Braunfels at the time. It's like, I have to be at work at nine. I was like, I don't know how to, it, this is not enough time. It needs to be earlier, but if it's any earlier, I'm not gonna go at the time. Now it doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, it just kind of um, evolved from there. and. And of course now we're all training for CIM. And so it's a good, it's a good crew to be with because a lot of us are training for the same goal. Uh, a lot of us are training together and I've met Terry and a bunch of other people. You obviously have come through. Uh, and so it's just, it's just been a great uh, way to just meet people for myself, so. You've hosted your own social runs twice yes. now. Yeah. This year, it's big. Mm -hmm. I was there for it. And as far as like, when you hosted these social runs, these two social runs, mm -hmm. and how do you, how did you feel when you saw everybody come together, and what is your mission? Like, Doing more. It was. I'm not going to say that it was surprising that so many people showed up, but it, initially it is. Uh, you feel so much like gratitude that someone would want to show up for this specific reason, or it was more for a need. I saw a need, 
And I saw that the need could be fulfilled by something as simple as, we're gonna call it a people of color social run. And that resonates, especially now, on this side of the pandemic, on this side of, uh, of you know, the George Floyds and the Ahmaud Aubreys were on this side and people are now more aware of, of, of that, right? And that could be whatever it is for that person who needs to, to see that, right? Um, specifically for the Austin running community, it was more of a need that I saw. I started noticing that more people of color and minority people were showing up to all these social runs. And then the thought was, well, wh why are there not any pe like specific runs or groups for people specifically for like Asian Americans or Mexican Americans or blacks? So you kind of see them all throughout. You can find these groups outside of Austin. You just don't see them here. And it just seemed natural. It was like, well, a people of color social run. Like, no one's done that. I can do that. East Austin Athletic Club opens up the space. Um, we're, I had vendors, you know, in hand, as in other people offered their vendors up to me once I told them what we were going to do. It just, it, it just came together so seamless that when people showed up, it was like, it was, it almost seemed like, I sh why didn't I do this sooner? You know, like, and then 90 people showed up and I was like, okay, so we're, we're onto something. And then since then, now I've had people reach out to me through social media, seeing that, hey, I saw you did a community run, you know, do you do X, Y, Z? And now we're gonna start a run club here, uh, here at the club called the East Austin Run Club, um, <clears throat> with the focus still being on the community runs, but it's gonna be more than a run group. It's gonna be very like coaching focused, things like that, so. The idea behind this video, Eric said, we kind of, he kind of like brought the idea of this calling it the torch, right? Something you pass down. So for anybody watching this video, Jesse, what would you like to pass down to them? Whether it's running, service, community, love. Anything? Yeah. Man. <laughs> I think learning, um, I have this reminder set on my phone every day. I have, I have a lot of reminders that come off uh, that I set like years ago. This one is, um, why did you wake up today? It goes off it, like every day. And I'm just, some days I can answer it and other days I'm just like, I have no clue <laughs> why I woke up today. And, but I always come back to, uh, so that's, that's it. That's, I guess that's what I would ask someone is like, what's your why? Can you figure out your personal mission statement? And what does that look like? And understand that it's it, just like life, it's gonna change. So although in your 20s it looks like this, at 25 it's gonna change. And then at 30 it's gonna change. And then, and then but in, but overall, eventually you'll figure out like the basis of like, this is who I am, uh, this is who I wanna be, and this is who I'm becoming. And then you figure out how do, how do I live it each day in a way that's, that's you know, it's, that stands for you. When, when people think of you, they think of like X, Y, Z. And that's, that's what I want. I want, and, and it's, but it's, what's great about it is you, it, you get to live it out every single day. And so, and if you don't fulfill it, if you don't fulfill it one day, then that's okay, because you have tomorrow. Although they say tomorrow is never guaranteed, but at least, you know, uh, at least you can wake up each day knowing that I can, you know, be like they say, 2% better or 1% better. So, I don't know, something like that. <laughs> I gotta pee so bad. <laughs> Cause I